All right, got that on there. I'll go ahead and turn the power on, see how it does. Here we go. Yeah, that's not good. Here goes the scary part. Do we flip it on? Should we, should we, should we? Here we go, you ready to see if you can hear it? This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, today we have a ice machine here. It's not one to work. They asked for it to be cleaned. Didn't tell us it wasn't working. Um, just assumed that was probably what was going on since most of the time that is what's going on. Walked upon it and the display is completely blank. Took out the screw, got inside here. Do not see any LEDs lighting up on the display in here. Wiggled all the wires. We need to check that fuse yet. Uh, couldn't get to the plug because all the stuff in the way and it looks like it's hardwired anyway possibly took a insulated pin here pushed down on the contactor so we know we've got 230 volts going to it uh, need to find out where we're losing our power do we have a bad control board what exactly is going on uh, if it was just a bad display i should have had some leds up here but like i said i don't think it's a bad controller so let's do a little probing all right, coming up here with our probes, we are on voltage. Checking across that fuse. We have 211 volts, that means it's open, it's blown. I'll be honest with you, this is the very first fuse I've ever had blown on one of these. So do we have a motor that's bad or what exactly caused it to blow? I'm not sure. Kinda need to look at the schematic here, wherever I set that at. Here we go, and let's see what that fuse protects. Coming right in here to the schematic. As you can see, these are all the outputs going to different devices. So you have a water valve that's being powered by it, air pump, hopper, or high pressure solenoid, or HPR solenoid, I don't know what they're abbreviating, harvest solenoid, dump solenoid, water pump, liquid solenoid there. So any one of those things could be it. I put a new harvest valve and dryer in this thing back in January 2019. So here we are in March of 23. It's lasted almost four years. About time to throw it away, I suspect, with the way things are built today. Got that coming over there. Oh, it look, looks like the gray wire and that one there is going up to the water valve, tying off of that, which this thing comes down does a bunch of jumping around. Let's go check and see if we can find some grounds, grounded motors. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the power turned off this, see if I can find it. I found it up here on the top and went ahead and flipped it off. I already used my insulated pin there, which I'm kind of making a joke about that. And pushed in the contactor and it didn't, uh, it didn't come on. Using the meter there, we've got a stray voltage of some sort. We got 2.9 volts. Going to chassis ground to there, one volt, one volt. So this is where your low Z on the meter would be in handy. Nothing on those two spots there. Coming back down to the contactor. Nothing there. Check the other side, because I don't know which side's live. Three volts there, so we should be dead. So let's see what kind of amperage this fuse is here. Looks like eight amps. From, that's a little one too. All right, so we're looking back here in the back for any rub-ins. Um, I did replace this valve. I don't really see anything in particular. There's a little bit of heat got on there, I think, when I was trying to raise it in. You can see a little bit of brown there, but that's not, not a melted wire as far as, like, shorting out. There's nothing there. What we're probably going to do, I'm going to jump to that motor. That's the most likely thing since it runs the most of everything in here. And see if that thing's shorted together. Uh, my wire will hot direct. You can see the not off by much. It could use a little cleaning, just the usual. Not as bad as some. Uh, not seeing any other wires or anything like that that uh, would have caused it. Everything's pretty much right here. So there's all those solenoids. Those are pretty much the only things that would have caused it. As you can see, it comes right up to here to that plug. And so we can check it at the plug, which might be the easiest thing to do. 
or check it down there at the actual device or at the actual solenoids, whichever. It just jumps, jumps, jumps. Might just go right to the solenoids. A little easier and try to figure it out because otherwise you gotta just pull that out and look, which I don't see anything burnt on there. I don't see anything burnt in the back side of the board as of now. Nothing shorted here. I think we're pretty good on all that. All right, so I went ahead and took the cover off that, and we're at 750 ohms on the water solenoid. Got another one back here we gotta get. I went ahead and took off these here. 1300 on that one. 1300 on that one. 1300 there. I went ahead and checked that water pump. It was what I assumed would be about normal. Uh, all you can do is about just kind of average amount and kind of look to see what the majority is that you've got. I don't know if it's in the book or not, but the only thing I haven't checked yet is the water pump, which is what I'm figuring is probably the problem. All right, so I've got the plug down there. You can kind of see it. And we have 130, or 100, we have 173.9 ohms. Nothing to ground, so I don't think it's a motor. We may, we have to just put the fuse in it and see what happens. I've kind of checked everything. I need to look through the schematic again, make sure there isn't nothing, but nothing showed shorted like, you know, one ohm, two ohms. I'm not seeing a whole lot. Everything back here kind of pops out of the side, and I've checked all those. I don't see anything rubbed into it. What that power does, it comes in from the wall outlet goes out to the outside uh, condenser unit and uh, feeds on out through the line set there and goes across. It's got a good plug on it. Usually don't have too many problems with that and I kind of forgot that I hit the button earlier and it ran. I don't see anything else more we can check short of getting that freaking fuse but I got a 5 amp fuse I can put on there or 3 amp. May I try a 3 amp just to see if it blows immediately or not? And then uh, I can go get another one. That's what sucks when you get fuses there. That, you know, oddball. Like I said, that's the only one I've ever had blown. All right, so usually keep my fused ones out here in my Tech Pack MC that I never use. I got that bag that you see in every video for free with the purchase of this one. And I just don't use it hardly ever. And it's stacked to the hilt with my best of bests. Because in case I want to go back to it, it's ready to roll. So I think I even got my better ratcheting wrenches since all those people like to complain about my wrenches. Oh, here we go. Look at that fancy thing there. There we go. Only had this for way before the little popper thing came out. All right, let's go in there and see if we can find it. We'll see how bad it uh, trips, it's three amps. It's way under what we need, but we might get lucky. Not a whole lot's happening. If it's an instant trip, there might be an internal failure. All right, got that on there. I'll go ahead and turn power on, see how it does. Here we go. Yeah, that's not good. Went ahead and yanked the board out. Nothing burnt on the back, but you stay right there. And it blew a chunk out of that chip. All right, guys, so I finally got my phone call back from Manitowoc because, you know, I really haven't had that many control boards fail. Well, they told me that when you turn it on like that and it blows immediately, the breaker, that's usually a transformer or a component on the circuit board itself that has failed. So we're ordering a new control board. It wouldn't have mattered what I would have done. Uh, it was going to do exactly what it did. So as much as I didn't like the way that looked, um, I had done my diligence and actually looked through and checked all the resistances. I don't know what the next step would have been otherwise. So uh, I asked them if they knew the uh, resistances for the motors and solenoids and he said no. 
So everything seems pretty much in line with what I've seen over the years. And then we're gonna order a new control board and clean the machine. All right guys, so we are back. Got the new part here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed real quick. Today's Friday, we got it overnighted. Uh, I think uh, we just basically waited one day. Let's get that thing installed. And now we do have to program this board if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've had to replace one. But mainly just need to tell it what kind of machine it is. That way it knows the capacity and timing and stuff like that. Looks like the same board. That right there is probably what shorted out, he said, or that transformer right there. Now, for those that was watching and seeing me touch the back of the board, you don't want to do that usually. But the first thing you want to do before handling the board is you want to touch a metal surface on the machine. That way any static discharge you have in your body can be grounded to the machine. You'll have the same differential. Uh, it helps prevent it. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect, but most of this stuff is not as sensitive as what it used to be. At least not this, these kind of boards here. But either way, it's always a good, good idea to sit there and uh, ground yourself to the machinery first. Make sure there's nothing there that needs to be doubled up. Pretty sure everything's cut and dry. It looks like that one there is on the very top. Here goes the scary part. Let's see whether the factory's right or not. Do we flip it on? Should we, should we, should we? Here we go, you ready to see if we can hear it? No bang, that's good. They knew what they were talking about. <laughs> go figure. Manual setup. So we're gonna hit, oh, there were my instructions. Hit over 317, that looks correct. So I wanted to scroll down past input model number and then hit the over button. Now we can pick what we got. Typed it in manually, but now I can scroll up and down. It can pick things, which looks like that's it right there. Serial number, hit the over button. Now I'll start doing that in there. There's my sensors. They're all 66 degrees, which is very unusual. They're all that accurate. Set up, there we go. Language, date and time. We'll go ahead and set this stuff up real quick. Got everything programmed. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Control boards are turning on. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing cleaned up real quick and get this thing up and going so they can have ice for tonight. I have my own little cleaning bucket here, which consists of some high-end buckets from chicken broth and some other stuff and some miscellaneous cleaning utilities here and some nickel safe so we're going to go ahead and get this thing brushed off get the chunks out of it run the cleaner through it and get this thing up and going um, it's not very bad if there's a little bit of something right up here uh, so we're going to get that done and we'll just go ahead and get this thing cleaned up i'm not going to show you how to clean an ice machine you guys should know how to do that by now if not there's plenty of videos out there on it okay you probably don't know how to do it so we're going to go ahead and show you best thing to do is completely take it apart clean all the big parts first that's the way i like to do it you can do it however you want you can follow the instructions and all that stuff but i get in there I get into my sensors that usually look like heck i get these things soaked i get my microphone here clean that up and take everything apart and scrub it down get all up underneath here all that crap underneath the sides all the crevices here clean all that get all that done then I run it through the machine um, you could run it through it first but I don't know I just like doing it here the big thing is getting back up underneath here you know portable blaster sprayer works really good and getting all those tight nasty spots I've got all kinds of Instagram videos and other things on it. That's the main thing. Just scrub it and get all the nasty chunks out of it because the machine cleaner by itself in here is not going to do uh, really anything uh, for the most part. Just, you know, short of letting it soak. If it has calcium on it, great. This green stuff does not get rid of any of the nasty stuff. All it does is really do the calcium buildup. So it's really important to get your uh, water level sensors clean and let them soak and then uh, the rest of it. We got everything back together, clean most everything out there. A few things that just doesn't want to come off, but got all this taken apart. Cleaned everything out uh, on the top here. 
it's running the clinger through now, which we're 24 minutes to end here, it looks like, and we can tell it to automatically do its thing when we're done. So once this runs a little longer and eventually shuts off, we'll go ahead and put it in ice mode and make sure everything works. Finally got her running. I always like to come in here into the time and temp, and we look at the sensors, kind of tells me what's going on with it. T3 and T4 is my evaporator and usually it'll have a delta of about seven degrees once it's running right. This uh, just came on far as the water. First thing it does is it starts freezing down and then if it starts running the water, once it gets established and running, stabilized, it will usually be seven degrees or less. Uh, you figure if you have enough refrigerant, it's going to easily overcome the water temperature and it's gonna keep a closer temperature if uh, to seven or below. If it doesn't have enough refrigerant, it's not feeding right, it's going to take away that temperature as it crosses the plate. There's a sensor up here on the top, there's a sensor at the bottom. So the refrigerant goes down and up and down and blah, blah, blah. So the water's coming down. If the water pulls away all that cold refrigerant that's boiling off in the evaporator real easily, then you have a feeding issue, refrigerant issue, potentially other issues, but it's just a cheap generic way to kind of see if things are going on which now we're at 15. Looks like it's somewhere around the 108 degree and the other sensor there is running 91. So I don't know, one of those should be discharge. Yeah, discharge, which makes me wonder if it's running a little bit on the lower side of things. All right, it's spinning faster than what it looks, it's just the way the frame rate is. Going down here to check and see, condenser coil is clean. I've seen hotter. I wonder if it's acting up. Let me check, check that uh, discharge. And here at the gauge, we're running right around 220-ish, which I think 235 is one of the cycle points, if I remember correctly. We're probably not off by much. Right there's the control right there. Kind of hard to see. We're not off by much, so we're, we're really close. We'll watch this for a bit. Should be uh, shutting down here, I bet, in a second. Um, just the, what happened is the generic uh, snap disc style fan cycle control took a dump and somebody just replaced it with the traditional fan cycle control like I did on the air conditioner, which don't really agree with the way they ran it right through the side of the metal. That's kind of dangerous and will eventually short out, but that's where we're at right now. We're running a, about 95 degree condensing temperature right there. It's 404. And we are running 404, so we're still above 90 degrees. Down here to the machine, just take a peeky poo here. There's that 90 degree mark, which like I said, we're running 95, so that's real close to that. About a five degree subcooling. Well, 90, about a four degree subcooling, if you think about it. If that's accurate, 91 degrees, we had 95 on our gauge, so about four, four degree subcooling. There's your discharge, 138, that's coming up some. Look at that, three and 10, which is a seven degree. It was five just a second ago. There's that seven. Oh, look at that, we're ready to go into harvest. I'm feeling, uh, oh yeah, we got ice already. Well, I feel a deep pocket there. Look at that, happy hog dog. Yeah, there we go. We'll edit that a little bit. Let's see how long it takes for harvest. That's the next thing we want to look for here. So, we just blinked uh, about 27 after there. It should drop here in about a minute, minute and a half at the most. Usually it'll do it even faster than that, especially after it's been cleaned and you got a clean evaporator. Should make sure these pumps are running. We can always run it through a um, test cycle, cycle each individual thing on. Uh, we got dual water filters there. Pressure's holding good on that. Here we go. Yeah, Shazam, look at that hot dog. Look at that hot dog. That is some hot dog, witty dog stuff here. We're making the, the almighty green. Let me make some green tonight. There we go. All right, got her marked. Been working on this turd for a while, 19. So there's 23, that was four years ago. Just keep on clicking away, right? Change that panel. You make it make this marker makes you think that I'm the only one who ever works on this stuff, but we actually have 12 guys that could be possibly working on it. It's working. Other than that, guys, I think we might got it. Let's back out of this and uh, let her do its thing. That was with the uh, panel or with the doors open, which makes a difference on it. 
All right, that's gonna wrap this one up, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends and family, give it away as a gift, feed it to your dog, take your cat for a walk, and we catch you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot. Later.